Hello, P555. I'm here with my Unit 7 response on uh, commercialized sports and answering the question, do you believe uh, college athletes should be paid? Uh, I think you can make a good argument for either side, but after reading the text and uh, watching the Big Time Losers video, I'm going to reaffirm my belief that, that athletes in college should be paid. Um, why should they be paid? Uh, like I'm Lumpkin on page 222 says that some athletes help their colleges collect millions of dollars in ticket sales, television right fees, and NCAA revenue um, from championships. He, all, he goes on and talks about the BCS conferences, that if each conference receives $17 million, uh, plus a couple of the conferences got an extra $4.5 million dollars for having a second team in the BCS games. Also in 2010, the NCAA extended their contract to televise the um, March Madness basketball tournament. They signed a contract for 14 years for $10.8 billion. Um, the video also, Big Time Losers, talks about some of the big time programs like uh, University of Basketball, University of Arizona Basketball, uh, how they bring in 15 million a year and they've been sold out for the past 18 years in a row They also getting over two million dollars in contracts with Nike uh, And Lumpkin the text asks the questions um, When coaches and athletic directors receive millions of dollars salaries from an economic rent not paid to athletes How is this ethical? How can sports administrators and coaches morally justify not paying the athletes who play the games, yet require these athletes to be students and demand that they dedicate, dedicate huge amounts of time to their sports while alleging that they are amateurs, not professionals? I think they're obviously treating them as professionals with the time that they have to put in and not having any concern for or having minimal concern for them as students. Um, in Coakley, he states that when sports are a business, players are workers. Even though they may have fun on the job, this isn't unique. Many people have fun with their job, but regardless of enjoyment, issues of legal status and fair rewards for work are important. Uh, is this situation an exploitation of athletes playing on teams that bring these revenues? I believe it is. Um, in Coakley, page 385, a recent study found that if football and basketball players at 121 universities were fairly compensated, what, they're, what they would be worth is $121,000 to $265,000 annually. Instead, these athletes are living at about $3,000 below the poverty level. At the same time, their coaches are making $3.5 million annually, and that's not, not even um, counting the bonuses that a lot of these coaches get. So obviously, I think they should be compensated with all this money that they're bringing into their programs. They are the ones that are putting in all the work and bringing in the fans and these contracts. So I definitely think they should be compensated. Um, but at the same time, I think there needs a bigger, needs to be a bigger emphasis on their academics. They are students. They should be students first, and athletes second. Just like we preach to our high school players, they need to do good in school first before they can play. I think it should be the same in athletics. But at the same time, these big businesses that are bringing in millions upon millions of dollars, in some cases billions of dollars, um, for the NCAA, I think the athletes should be getting compensated. Um, the Big Time Losers video also mentioned that 46% of football players and 54% of basketball players failed to graduate. Uh, that's not good for these colleges and their reputations and definitely not good for these athletes, especially when we talk about only 1% or less than 1% of these athletes make it to the pros. So they need to be getting their education while they're there. A lot of times these athletes aren't even taking classes towards graduating. They're just taking these easy classes so they can be eligible to play. 
uh, like Andre uh, Iguodala mentioned that when he was at Arizona State, that eighty percent of the focus was on athletics and about twenty percent on academics. Um, so I think that needs to be needs to be changed. Um, as far as the Knight Foundation Commission, some of their recommendations was they called to reaffirm the school's president authority authority over athletics. Um, the presidents need to exert control over these conferences, the NCAA, and the television interests. Um, I think it's a major mistake when some of these contracts that are signed, um, they basically have a lot of authority over the scheduling of these games. Some of these athletes are playing two, three times a week away games, like sometimes in other states, and they play late, they get home late, and sometimes the next day, and they expect them to go to school. I think it's just not possible and not um, realistic. But I also think there should be incentives for students that do get good grades. I think they should get like a bonus stipend or a bonus scholarship if they're keeping their grades up. Uh, that should be an incentive, just like biz businesses, which is which this is a big business. When businesses do well, their employers get bonuses. So I think that should be an incentive for them to keep their grades up and do well in school first. Um, some of the positives and negatives. Um, some of these colleges, schools can gain back their academic credibility that they've lost because their spo sports programs are multi-million dollar entertainment businesses. Um, hopefully it would stop the corruption of some of these agents and boosters that pay these college athletes. And some of these athletes end up getting into trouble and getting their schools and the programs in trouble having to face sanctions and suspensions. I know when I was at school at San Diego State, uh, Mar I was there when Marshall Falk was there. And uh, when he first got there, he was driving a beat up Nissan Maxima. And then all of a sudden he's driving a nice 300Z. The next school year, he shows up with a nice Mercedes and ends up getting an even nicer convertible Mercedes after that. So. I know he wasn't buying that. Some that money came from somewhere. Everybody knew it, but luckily he didn't get in trouble. But obviously, an agent or booster or somebody is giving him these cars, and I'm sure he's getting money under the table, just like a lot of these athletes do. So if they're being compensated. Hopefully, that'll avoid some of that. Um, I think it'll also avoid some of these athletes jumping to the pros too soon, and. It'll keep a lot of these students from being in financial debt with these big student loans that, loans that they have to take out to finish their schooling. Um, what else? Some of the negatives, I think, would be some of the smaller colleges uh, may have unfair financial burdens on them. Uh, could create animosity between student athletes if some of them are getting paid more than others. Um, and even some of the regular students might have animosity toward these athletes that are getting paid, and they're not, because they're there just as students. Um, there also might be a possibility of students uh, raising issues for equality when it comes to the compensations and could be possible lawsuits. Um, some athletes might not prioritize their education, but again, I think there should be incentives to get good grades so they can get the bonus stipends and scholarships like that would help with that uh, and then some schools may not have those upgraded facilities that a lot of these schools have but at the same time hopefully it'll slow down like they mentioned the arms race of having these nice facilities and then another school getting nicer and going back and forth just to circle um, one of the negatives, not really a negative, but some of these coaches won't be getting the huge salaries that they are getting. Uh, how would colleges regulate it? Uh, I think like the Knight Foundation Commission recommended a one plus three model for reform. It called for the president's authority over it, the intercollegiate athletics and the NCAA. Um, the first um, 
model for reform. They mentioned strengthening the eligibility requirements, academic progress, and graduation rates uh, for their athletics. But mainly, I think it's the financial integrity part. There needs to be transparency of all the financial reports that go on with athletics. Um, and also the foundation call for independent uh, authentic, authentic, authentication um, by outside body of the integrity of each institution's sport, sports program. Uh, number four, should all athletes on the team be paid? Yes, I think to an extent, I think their education should be paid for, but then also some of the high revenue sports that bring in the big money, I think they should be compensated for it. Um, in cases like Andre Guadala, he helps bring in extra money for the sale of jerseys. I know I was at San Diego State, I got two Marshall Falk jerseys. It doesn't have his name on it, but obviously it has his number. Everybody was buying them. I think those athletes should be compensated one way or another. Um, as far as the Knight Foundation Commission, what I learned from the website and the readings was that it created a response for, because of several scandals in college sports. Um, the goal of the commission was to recommend a reform agenda that emphasizes academic values in an arena where commercialization of college sports often overshadow the underlying goals of higher education. They had the one plus three model for reform. They called to reaffirm that the school's president's authority over all aspects of intercollegiate athletics and for presidents to exert control over conferences, the NCAA, and television interests associated with their athletic programs. They called to strengthen their eligibility requirements, like I mentioned before. Uh, they need to have financial integrity and account accountability through a certification process that requires an in-depth institutional self-study and peer review. Um, the last question, what do you find intriguing and, and valuable to you in your interaction with sport? Um, to answer that question, I would say what I feel, feel intriguing and valuable in sports is basically the spirit of competition and having to try to outperform your opponents. And some of the values is pushing yourself to your limits, improving yourself each time that you compete. Some of the other values I've gotten is um, discipline aspects and the worth, work ethic it takes, overcoming adversity, and the toughness, toughness it takes to play a sport. And then the importance of teamwork. As far as watching sports, uh, to me it's a form of entertainment. It's exciting watching some of these top-notch athletes go at it and speed and power and the incredible plays that some of these guys make. Um, just the excitement of watching these sports and seeing these athletes at that level. And then being a coach, also the strategies and the tactics and some of the plays that are called. I get a lot out of that also. And I think that's about it. Sorry it's so long, but hope to hear from you guys and watch some of your videos. Thank you.